Well, hello, that's me again, and it's um, <clears throat> Tuesday, April 19th, and there are some things which we need to discuss today. And I will start with explanation of the, uh, not explanation really, let's say it's a simple Q&A thing. And I had some people asking me in the comments, uh, and to my last video, uh, uh, when they looked at the map, of the alleged maps of the uh, uh, combat activities of uh, uh, Russian forces in Donbass and say, how? Huh. But maps do not show the full surrounding, so to speak, or enveloping of the this large uh, VSU grouping. And here I show you the map, and this map is, um, it just shows you generally where they are concentrated. And then, after you see this map, you can take a look at the other map, which shows the concentration of the Ukrainian troops. Some people estimate it's upward to, you know, of 100,000 people. I think so, it's much less now. And uh, if you look at the, uh, basically, distance between um, Izum, which is taken basically for all intents and purposes by Russian forces, and Ugledar, it's only 99 uh, English miles, I mean, uh, which is 159 kilometers. And considering the fact that those troops are really not mobile anymore, and uh, basically they are denied pretty much most of the supplies, so in this case, the gap, so to speak, which you, uh, uh, at which you look at the kind of west, west of those troops, it really doesn't matter that much because it's mostly, the, um, um, in terms of terrain, it's pretty open uh, steps and some random forest, which are well controlled by Russian uh, artillery, Russian uh, standoff weapons, and of course, Russian aviation. So in this particular case, any type, any uh, attempt to uh, escape to the west, so to speak, means basically putting yourself you know, you know, a huge target sign on your head or on your back, and it means you being obliterated. Obviously, if you follow the uh, propaganda uh, of uh, Ukraine, which is coming from Ukraine, and of course uh, spread around by the Western media, while well, Russians should have collapsed already uh, a month ago, and they should have run out of their ammunition and standoff weapons and things of this nature. But of course, you know what, uh, despite the claims that VSU is winning their uh, campaign as Mr. Ben Hodges, you know, the US general no less, or others like him continue to claim. Reality, of course, is such that since yesterday, uh, so-called second phase, which was uh, um, um, basically admitted today uh, by Minister of Foreign Affairs of Russia, uh, Sergei Lavrov, uh, this so-called phase two has started and there is uh, not just marked, there is a uh, manifold increase of the fire uh, impact, so to speak, activity from the Russian forces in this Donetsk cauldron and just uh, in accordance to uh, Russian Minister of Defense, just yesterday more than 1200 military targets have, uh, and objects have been uh, struck by uh, all kinds of weaponry from, you know, bomb, uh, bomb strikes using uh, uh, aviation to artillery, obviously, to uh, rockets and to standoff weapons. So we're looking at the dramatic increase in the uh, uh, basically uh, activity, and we also have the confirmed uh, uh, information uh, that Russian forces are in uh, maneuvering very actively right now, and there are there are some obviously gains. <laughs> which for now I will not uh, be discussing because we will have to get a uh, uh, clearer picture of the operation and what is going on there. But there is no denial that uh, the reduction of this cauldron and annihilation of the what's left basically of the combat, uh, uh, serious combat forces of Wusu has started and uh, if anybody will ask me, um, what's the time frame? Well, I don't know. 
And again, I want to point out that uh, it's uh, on the record. And if you read my blog, you can certainly read, the, uh, for example, uh, a report on the uh, interview uh, of famous Russian military correspondent. He is actually used to be cadre officer. He graduated no less Lvov Political Academy. And uh, Vladislav Shurigin, he was talking to the senior officer of Russian Marines. And this officer, in basically half a page of responses, debunked pretty much all BS, which is being spread by uh, uh, VSU and uh, by uh, Western curators, including Western mass media. And this uh, Marine officer stated, no, we just, you know, we save our personnel. We try as much, uh, you know, as possible to save our personnel, n not getting them into the, uh, you know, way of the unnecessary combat. And of course, civilians. Other than that, he said, there's no problem, we just analyze them. And you already know that basically Mariupol, which was supposed to be this, you know, you know unconquerable fortress of the, you know, uh, Ukrainian troops, was basically taken. <clears throat> and even uh, already the northern part of Azovstal is uh, controlled by uh, Aldenair forces and the reduction of the uh, pocket watch, whatever is left there, we don't know. Uh, some people say it's up to 3,000, uh, some say now it's 1,500, but after the uh, strategic aviation of uh, Russian strategic aviation kind of dropped a bunch of really heavy uh, 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 bombs, I don't think so very many left there who really want to continue to fight. And that is why today there was another three uh, humanitarian corridors uh, opened even for those uh, Nazi forces, which of course are the most fanatical and most dangerous people, but they were given, you know, the guarantee that they will, their lives will be spared. It doesn't mean that they're not going to be taken prisoners, they will be taken prisoners of war, and they will be judged, but they will not have the death penalties carried, you know, or charged or whatever uh, on them, and uh, that might be the case uh, for them to start really thinking um, if they want to live. I don't know what will be that life if they get, for example, life sentence, but many of them certainly deserve to have it. And uh, Russian high security prisons, especially for those who have life sentences, my gosh, it's uh, it's pretty tough living. But it's still living, nonetheless. You can, you can read newspapers, you know, you can walk for an hour in some, you know, internal yard and uh, under the guards, you know, watching you. But it's still better, I guess, than being uh, buried alive if you're unlucky and under some rubble there and then die torturous and horrible death, but it is what it is. So anyhow, this was the issue of maps I wanted to talk about, and in this particular case, the distance of uh, between those, so to speak, not quite pincers yet, but the distance between those edges of the front, which is enclosing around uh, those forces, uh, is uh, really not that significant. It's really just 159 kilometers. It's nothing in the modern uh, means of the uh, uh, in the modern weapon systems, and especially um, in such terrain as that one, which is in there, which is primarily flat terrain, and the only saving grace, so to speak, for now for those people from Viso is the fact that for eight years it was prepared, and the whole uh, basically. Uh, uh, area there have been turned into the one huge fortress, especially with a lot of the tunnels and uh, other uh, the, uh, trenches and going not only near, sometimes under the civilian structures, including the apartment complexes and uh, uh, houses of civilians. So, but looks like um, that issue is kind of moot, or that point is now moot, because, uh, yeah, the annihilation of this cauldron has started, and uh, we'll see how it will go. I think so that at this stage, the classic envelopment and, you know, uh, it depends really how you want to do it because there are a no number of ways you can do it and that's but i do not want to go into the details of that and uh, uh because we don't know uh, uh, as much as needed to make a proper uh, so to speak uh, a presentation here so let's leave it at that and uh, just observe what is going to be happening I, I believe as many sources in russian forces in ministry of defense and elder 
Bonaire state that uh, they expect up to 30,000 prisoners of war from uh, Vesu and um, you know the rest I don't know they will be killed pretty much annihilated now a little bit uh, so I hope this answers this uh, question about what is the envelopment when uh, you have number of K 52s and MI 28s and uh, you know MSTA uh, and um, other artillery systems you basically close the fire cauldron you close it with the fire you close it with the fire impact and that makes the escape virtually impossible without being destroyed so that's that i don't want to go also into the uh, uh um, transportation situation or so-called reserves which allegedly could have been delivered to this uh uh, uh grouping they will not be delivered because those twenty-five thousand. uh allegedly 25,000 of WSU uh, soldiers they were trying to uh, remove from Kiev and somehow got them bogged down and Russians now surrounding them also so it really doesn't matter no matter what you try and no matter what kind of weapon systems uh, the West and NATO are trying to deliver there it absolutely makes no difference whatsoever those weapon systems will be destroyed or will be sold by the SU to Elden Air forces or will be captured so it's uh, really just basically the uh, PR actions on the part of the West and that brings us also to this um, interesting um, uh, not fact really the trend which even now liberal uh, some kind of liberal of uh, uh, Russian journalists or, or people who you would call more western leaning people not necessarily just you know fanatical liberal fifth column but people who are not fifth column but who are western uh, leaning they uh, admit uh, this simple fact that basically you cannot talk to uh, European elites or Western elites in general and it's not just the racist thing but because they are indeed you know they don't consider Russians to be Europeans as one of the German scholars recently like a few days ago stated that well Russians could look like us but they are not Europeans and um, I don't know how much racist, uh, 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 so to speak, uh, element in all that. There may be some, but there is, there is no doubt that Russians will not leave and they rejected completely the whole set of modern European values. And those modern European values and so to speak Western values, they certainly do not have any <coughs> relation to the Western values of the past, which made West West great, but there are still some people uh, uh, in uh, in the West, and especially Western elites, and especially in academy, uh, much of which is not very bright and not very well educated, that they still think that the West is so awesome, and you know, uh, it's the whole thing. You know, the world has to look up to the West and uh, try to emulate it. Well, it, that might have been true thirty or fifty years ago or even 100 years ago not anymore and that's what they don't understand and that's precisely they don't the reason they don't understand that they consider themselves so absolutely irresistible and wonderful is precisely because they're not very cultured people anymore i'm talking uh, about the decline which is precipitous decline of western elites uh, constantly it is really downright ridiculous to look at those people and read and listen to what they say because this is absolutely i mean academically second rate if not the third rate absolutely derivative and absolutely mindless or bogus statements and uh, when you read and look at the research they do it's just laughable I'm, I'm talking about mostly humanities of course and those people who pretend to be intellectuals you know in this field I'm not talking about the actual applied sciences like physics chemistry uh, and uh, things of this nature definitely West uh, still retains some degree of the leadership in this but even that is uh, you know uh, going away and uh, 
So uh, even the even today's headlines they are really funny because if you re read for example oil price I go there it's still propaganda outlet but at least they try to uh, dis uh, describe the industry and uh, energy related uh, issues but one of the uh, yesterday's actually uh, uh, headline is German industry fears immediate Russian gas ban well there is there is a reason they fear it because obviously uh once you ban russian gas which they don't not yet at least well there is no industry left and that's the whole thing and evidently there are um, poll numbers or the you know measuring of the public opinion in germany for example today you can look it up it's all over the place i mean not obviously in the mainstream media but it's it's still you can find it using any kind of the search engine basically that mr schultz and his government they evidently are popular upward of 38 percent of german uh, society that means the other 62 they don't really like them and i want to say only one thing and again please don't misinterpret me i am in many respects western man myself but again not modern western man and i cannot say that i necessarily subscribe to everything but you know what west has committed and uh, throughout its greatness but i am the one i am the guy who do not deny the greatness genuine greatness what and uh, you know west achievements which definitely moved civilization towards uh, some other whatever you call it progress if you wish and we live uh today better in material uh, sense many at least of us uh primarily because of the west achievement and technologies in uh what have you even uh, medicine uh pharm pharmaceutical uh science and what have you you know it's all we were shaped our civilization global civilization was shaped for the last 500 years by western achievement but it's not like this anymore west doesn't hold monopoly on that anymore and in fact indeed the main um uh, center of gravity of the development economic and technological development is moving to the center and east of the uh, Eurasian landmass and Europe has to live with that you know and now when you look and read those headlines and you uh, see the poll numbers and that Schultz is not popular and well what did you expect you chose it it's not like they they really were t twisting hands of the uh, Western public, in this particular case, Germans, to elect that kind of government. You got it. You voted for it. Live with it. Same goes for the United States. Same, go same goes for France, for example, which probably will elect Macron, a classic globalist, and the person who doesn't know how to run shit, basically. And the point is that even Marie Le Pen, you know, and as my friends from France say, they are ju she's just another political animal. She's into it for the uh, uh, political power, and I don't think so you can save what has been done to the at least Western Europe anymore. It's not there. There is no, uh, so to speak, will to survive and live in the West, in the combined West. Same goes for the United States. But again, I reiterate this point all the time. At least for now, for a while longer, the United States has the chance of prolong its uh, agony, so to speak, by means of eating Europe. And all the Europeans try to resist now, like not banning Russian gas or oil, although they're probably going to be banning Russian coal. Hey, that's fine. You know, so uh, you're not going to continue to live like that. At some point of time, the United States either going to twist their hands or something political will happen there because obviously uh, people are begin beginning to live much worse and are, are much worse than they used to be even three, four years ago. And this is just the start. So are we talking about possible political instability? Absolutely. People need to eat. But when you have the, uh, in uh, such uh, outlets like Build, who uh, suggest you not to really shower, except for, you know, those personal, very personal places, you know, 
uh, and armpits and say that, hey, uh, you don't have to even use the soap after your sweaty workout, just use the water and preferably cold one and very short one because uh, sweat dissolves really nicely. So, and they said that, yeah, two, three weeks and, you know, without shower really. And after that, the bacteria begins to really uh, re rejuvenate your uh, skin and you st stop stinking. It's like, yeah. Yeah, that's what is coming. And then, of course, the food uh, also will be the issue. So Europe did it to itself. And although, as I already stated, the United States is definitely involved in control of the Europe. It's definitely involved in preparation and corrupting of the European elites. But we have to understand there were always genuine articles there who wanted it who saw it as the only outcome for the Europe, and in this particular case, you know, those subhuman Russians and who do not share those progressive values, they should go to hell, right? Absolutely. Don't buy, you know, energy from Russia. Don't buy anything from Russia and see how you will fare, you know. And that absolutely correct and it is absolutely relevant and applicable to both Germany and France as the main, so to speak, economic powerhouses. Not that power, power really anymore. And that will continue for a while, you know, in Europe until, yeah, probably some major social and political upheavals will begin to manifest itself in, in kind of, you know, uh, that we cannot ignore this anymore. But it's already starting, the process is ongoing. I don't know what's the deal there with Italy, and, but Europe generally, as I already stated, did it to itself. So, I don't really shed many tears anymore. I used to. So. Now, uh, a little bit in conclusion, uh, the speculations about uh, uh, missile cruiser Moskva continue to uh, basically uh, uh, permeate the informational space, I mean, all over the place, and both in Russia and in the West. I can tell you only one thing. I'm not going to go there doing my uh, speculations or presenting my hypo hypothesis. I uh, have some, but I do not want to go out there and, you know, make full, not only out of myself, but out of you too, by giving you incorrect information or incorrect ideas. However, even in the last uh, photo of Moskva, and it's actually now very popular now, the thing which I... Uh, uh, paid attention to was if my uh, eyes do not uh, really betray me it was the fact that the uh, sliding hatches of the asa m uh, air defense complex and it's the air def defense complex which actually on ships uh, uh, naval ships of russia what it does it usually uh, is uh, hidden under the uh, in, in the uh, comp uh, spe special compartment and it pops up it when it pops up it already has two missiles on its, uh, uh, basically, uh, guides ready to shoot. Once it shoots those missiles, it goes down again, reloads, pops up again with the two missiles. Uh, the sliding hatches there were a little bit open uh, from what I saw, which are near the uh, helicopter hangar. Uh, and that gives me an idea that maybe some kind of the air uh, defense uh, issue was happening around Moskva. But I don't know yet. That might have been even malfunction of the electronics and the actuators, because obviously the, uh, the fire could have basically damaged some number of the key uh, power supply elements. And... But that was the thing which I noticed. So, but again, I just, I'm just giving you the context here. I have no idea what happened there and will not have any idea, clear idea, uh, until a Russian Minister of Defense begins to really give explanations and present some facts. So, this is what I wanted to talk about today. And as usual, those who can afford, uh, please support me on the Patreon and subscribe to my channel and that will allow me to pretty much you know talk to you guys so as always uh have a nice rest of the week uh i'll talk to you later guys bye bye